lesson, we will be looking at how to compare and order fractions and decimals. So when you're comparing fractions and decimals, the easiest way for me to do that is to change everything into a decimal, because I think it's easier to compare numbers when they're decimals versus when they're fractions, and I think it's a little bit faster as well. So if you prefer to work with fractions, you can change all these into fractions. But my suggestion would be to change everything into a decimal so it's easier to work with. So first we're just going to look at comparing two numbers and how we're going to do that. So if I look at this first one, I have 6 tenths and 4 fifths. So for me, my first step would be to change everything into a decimal. So we already have 0 0.6, 6 tenths, and that's already a decimal. So then I'm going to change 4 fifths into our decimal. And in our last lesson, we talked about how to do that. Um, to do that, we take the numerator, the number on top, and divide it by the denominator, the number on the bottom. The top number always goes inside of the box. And now we have how many tenths is 5 going to 4? 7. So we're going to add a decimal point and a 0. And now we have how many tenths is 5 going to 40? And that would be 8 times. And 5 times 8 is 40, so we're going to subtract 40 and get 0. So 4 fifths of the decimal is 0.8. So now, I think about, now that we have them both as decimals, I think about this as money. So when we have money, we're always going to have two numbers to the right of the decimal, so I'm just going to add a zero. We could add on as many zeros as we want to each of these, and they would still be the same number. But for me now, it's easier to compare, because we have 60 cents and 80 cents. Which one is bigger? Which one, in which case, do we have more money? And obviously, 80 cents is more than 60 cents, so 4 fifths is greater than and remember, greater than and less than, whatever side is open, like the crocodile mouth, the crocodile likes to eat the bigger number, and so it's facing four fifths because that one looks bigger. This next one should be a pretty easy one to change everything into decimals because we have one and a half, and one and a half as a decimal is 1.5 because a half is like a half of a dollar, which is 50 cents, and here we have one and 49 hundredths. So now we can compare the numbers like we would for money. So I'm going to add on a zero to this one. So it's like we have a dollar fifty and a dollar forty-nine. And a dollar fifty is more than a dollar forty-nine. So one and one half is greater than one and forty-nine hundredths. Now this last one I just wanted to point out because there's negatives, and we talked a while back ago when we were learning about integers that with negatives everything is backwards. So whichever number was greater. And the positive side is actually going to be smaller because it's further away from zero. So first thing I'm going to do is change everything to a decimal, just like before. And negative one-third as a decimal, we talked about this a lot in the last lesson, is 0.3 repeating. Or in this case, I'm just going to write it as 0.33. Yes, I know it goes on forever, but we're going to think about it like money. So this would be like 33 cents. And then 0 0.2, 2 cents, I'm going to add a zero on. That's like 20 cents. Or, sorry, 20 hundredths. So now I have 20 hundredths and 33 hundredths. So not exactly, but about, since we're not using three repeating here. And so now, which number is closer to zero? Because that's going to be our bigger number. 20 hundredths or 33 hundredths? Well, 20 hundredths is going to be closer to zero, so that's our bigger number. And if you're not sure, if you can get rid of the negatives and you have like 20 cents and 33 cents, 33 cents is bigger, but since we're working with negatives, it's the opposite, so 33 is really smaller than our 20 hundredths, so 20 hundredths would be bigger because they're working with negatives. So that's just something to remember. Now we're just going to take this one step further and have a list of numbers, decimals and fractions, and we're going to put them in order from least to greatest. So just like we did before when we were comparing two fractions or two decimals or one of each, this time let's change them all into decimals to start with, and then we'll put them in order. So these first two are already ready to go. Negative one third, we just talked about on the last slide, is like 0.3 repeating, but I'm going to write it as 0.33, so we can think of it as money. And then this one's ready to go. And then negative five thirds, well, Let's write that out as a division problem so we can see what that would be. 3 goes into 5 one time, and 3 times 1 is 3. We can subtract and get 2. 3 doesn't go into 2, so I'm going to add a decimal point and a 0. And 
three will go into 26 times. And that would be 18. And subtract and get two. Bring down a zero. Three goes into 26 times. That will be 18. You can start to see that we're having the same number repeat over and over again. So this is really 1.6 repeated over and over again. So I'm going to write that over here. Negative 1.6. And just like the 0 0.333 repeating, I'm going to write this one just like you would for money. Yes, you know, it goes on forever, but in this case, we're just going to get about to help us compare. So now let's put these in order from least to greatest. So first of all, I'm going to look at all the negative numbers because they're obviously smaller than our positives. And we have 5 tenths, negative 0.3 repeated over and over again, and negative 1.6 repeated over and over again. I'm going to write down this one right here first because that one is the only even whole number, so that one has to be the smallest. So negative 1 point, and I'm actually going to write it as the original number. Let me write that. And the original number was negative 5 thirds. In your answer, you should always write down whatever number is that were actually given. So negative 5 thirds. And then after that, now I have 5 tenths, negative 5 tenths, and negative 3 repeat, negative point 0.3 repeat over and over again. Now think of it as money, just like you did in the last problem. And which one is smaller, negative 50 cents or negative 33 cents? Well, negative 50 cents would be smaller because the opposite of when we're working with positives. So we'd have negative 0.5 and then negative one-third. Now we're done with all of our negatives, and we can move on to our positives. So we have one in 25 hundredths and five tenths. Well, this is like 50 cents. This is like $1.25, so next smallest would be our 0.5, five tenths. And then our biggest of all these numbers would be one and 25 hundredths. So as you can see, it made it a lot easier to change everything into decimals first because then they were all the same types of numbers for comparing. And then we can think of it like money, which for a lot of people is easier to do because we do so much with money. So just remember when you're comparing and ordering numbers, first change everything into decimals. For most people, that's going to be easier. And then compare it like you would looking at money. So if you need to add on some zeros to make it easier so that they look like money, that's an awesome thing that you can do.